Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Maria, and um, I would just first like to say that um, as a basic scientist, um, because I don't work as a clinician, it is very inspiring to talk to you, uh, the very people for whom we do this um, basic research. So um, for the last several years, I've been interested very much in the basically inner needs of our nervous system, the energy that is necessary for it to function. Um, and I'll be talking a little bit about that. So um, here's our nervous system, the whole of it. So the, our brain, the spinal cord, and then the peripheral nerves. So you will all remember from biology some time ago that these building blocks of our bodies called cells, are these microscopic structures, which we can see only under the microscope. Well, in the nervous system, cells are easily over a meter long. So basically, some cells, a lot of them, start around here in our back and then run all the way down to our fifth toe. So you can imagine that something that is so long, if it doesn't have energy supply to each of these little parts, it will just all die, and that's not good news. So what do we need this energy for? Well, for the obvious things, really, like walking or jumping up and down, but also for things that you wouldn't necessarily think we need much energy to do. Like, for example, if we were to st sit out, uh, stand outside and just feel the rain on our fingers, our nervous system is using up the energy. Also, for just sitting and thinking of an idea, again, the nervous system needs some energy to do that. So here's the little cartoon of some nerve cells starting here in the spinal cord and running all the way down to the muscle. So if I magnify this middle bit here, this is our nerve fiber here. And what we see is that basically every nerve fiber is surrounded by these structures which look like little sausages on a string with these little gaps in between. So why is it like that? Well, if you think about the function of our nervous system, the main function really is to convey signals from our brain, which controls everything, to the every other part of our body. And this kind of a structure enables that these signals are transmitted by a, basically a speed of as fast as bullet train we have these days. So it's extremely fast, and you can then imagine that something that runs so fast, um, 250 miles an hour really, really needs quite a lot of fuel to get it going. So what actually do our nerves use this energy for? So this is our fiber. So here's the axon in yellow, the nerve fiber, and the protective myelin around it, and then there is a gap. And what are the signals that travel from our brain to our bodies? These signals are nothing other than little electrical impulses, very similar to the electricity that runs all these lights and the projector and everything. And if you remember then, back in your physics lesson some time ago what the electricity is, the electricity is basically just a directional flow of some charged particles. But they have to be charged, otherwise there is no electricity. Well, we are built, our bodies, so that we contain a lot of these charged particles in various different types. But for the signals in our nervous system, Two are particularly important. They're called sodium and potassium. And I show them here, just for the simplicity, uh, sodium as gentlemen and potassium as ladies. So they are in our bodies. And it just happens so that the men are usually on the outside and the ladies are usually on the inside. However, there are gates or doors that these people can use to move around, and gentlemen usually prefer the big blue macho do doors, and the ladies rather use the pink ones. So what happens if we, for example, think, let's lift a finger? The thought is born in our brain, um, which is then propagated to our muscle to lift this finger. And if you imagine that this thought is nothing else but the two big television screens being turned on, and one is on the inside and one is on the outside. But imagine that the television screen on the inside now starts playing a football match. 
and the one on the outside start playing a fashion show. So you know what's going to happen. Basically, all the men are going to rush inside to watch the football match, and all the ladies are going to go outside to watch the fashion show. And it is really this rush and this surge of the charged men and ladies that actually is this electrical impulse. So if you imagine that that happens in this, this gap here or that gap there, somewhere down the road in another pub or another building, somebody hears about hustle and bustle of the football match here and then turns on the telly over here, what's going to happen? Again, men are going to rush inside, ladies on the outside. That's going to happen on the next gap as well, or in the next pub further down. And in fact, this is that signal, this is that impulse that runs all around our bodies in order to, say, lift a finger. But that's all fine as long as you don't want to start playing the piano. What, what happens then? Um, well, then you can't have another impulse in this situation because it would be very hard to stop men watching football or the ladies to watch the fashion show. So in order to restore the original order, what we have in our nerves are these big boys, um, and I show them there here as the bouncers, who basically have a task to, against men's will, push them back out of the pub to the outside and bring the ladies inside and close the doors so then the next impulse can come in. And this is exactly what they do. But because they have to put the men on the outside against their will, really, because very few men will want to, uh, voluntarily leave the pub at that point, uh, they need lots of energy. And this is where the energy is used up in our nerves. We have these little batteries which carry food for the bouncers. And I showed the food here as these little burgers. So when the bouncers are strong and happy, what they do is that they push all the men on the outside, bring the ladies on the inside, switch off the telly, close the door so the next impulse can come, and then we can actually play the piano. But what happens in multiple sclerosis? You will all be probably aware that some parts of our fibers um, have lost their protective sheath, they lost these little sausages, and they're naked like that. So that, there's the fiber. Everything else is fairly similar, actually. We have all the men on the outside and all the, all the ladies on the inside. But what is different is that we have far more doors, actually, on this naked fiber. As if somebody has basically knocked down the walls of a pub and put far more doors. So there is far more access points for men to come in. And of course, when the football starts inside, the men are going to go in and the ladies are going to go out, but this time there will be far more men inside the pub, which means that the bouncers have much harder job to get them on the outside. And because of that, they require far more energy. So this is what happens in multiple sclerosis. We find that there is far more batteries inside these naked parts of our fibers. But maybe that is fine. And the bouncers restore the original order and close the gates. But in order to help them, there are certain st strategies these days um, that you will hear about after me from Ahmed and later on from Annie. Basically, if we had some locks to um, lock most of these doors to stop too many men coming in, then we would help our bouncers and then um, possibly save some energy. Um, now, there is a little twist there. In order to bring all the batteries to the naked part of the axon, something has to bring them there. And this little animation actually shows how is that done. This part here is a rail, or many, many of such exist in our nervous system. And this little fellow here is basically a pulling battery full of burgers. But you, you can see how laborious this looks. And this little motor here also needs lots of energy in order to do so. So that was the animation 
um, from how that looks. Uh, this is, I don't know if you can see it because of lots of lights. Um, this is a real film of the nerves, and you can see the fibers. I hope you can see them, and even some gaps there and there. And you can see lots of these little batteries in red, sometimes moving quite a lot, most of them moving, or sometimes being very stationary. And I can tell you that it's usually that when we exercise, when we're using energy, that these batteries are moving faster and more of them are actually running up and down the, net, the, the fiber. Whereas when we're sleeping, everything is sort of stationary. And why am I saying this? Well, um, for you as patients, um, it is important that we know what kind of batteries do we really possess. Do we have that type that is um, that, that lasts longer if it's repeatedly emptied and recharged? So whether is it better for us basically to keep using them and keep exercising, or whether we have type of batteries that um, are better if they're not used and then they last longer. So we don't know this for the moment, um, but we hope to find out and then to be able to give you a proper advice as to what is actually better for you. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, <laughs>